What's up everybody and welcome back to another Simple Film Studios video where today we are going to be going through how to get gimbal like footage or if you need it, handheld. So one of the advantages with a gimbal like this, which is a Ronin RSC2, which I actually got from my mate Paulie, more like a brother, love you Paulie. I absolutely love this gimbal and it gives you the smoothest footage that you can possibly get with a camera once you put it on there. And when you're shooting with prime lenses, say 15 mil, whatever it is, 16 mil, even 35 mil, this thing is absolutely phenomenal. However, if you're in a run and gun situation where you have a lens that's a zoom lens, like this one, I nearly dropped that. Like this one, where it goes out and in and out and in, and the weight, especially if you use a matte box like this, can actually change quite dramatically, and then it's gonna throw the weight of the gimbal off and you'd need to rebalance it every time that you change focal lengths. So what do you do in that situation? What's the best settings in a camera that's gonna help you get stable footage depending on the purpose of use? Now, the reason why I say the purpose of use is because it's gonna vary from spot to spot. So if you're in the gym and you're trying to film somebody or you're filming something in the gym that's got that high active fast motion, you know, you still need stabilization, but maybe you want something that's a little bit more jerky, a little bit quicker, and we're gonna to get to that. But what I'm gonna go through today is we're going to go through four different options in your camera. Now I use the Canon R8. It doesn't have IBIS or in-body image stabilization. However, it does have an electric stabilization and an enhanced stabilization mode, which we're going to get into, as well as using the 24 to 105 L lens, which is an F4. That also has image stabilization or lens stabilization as an option. So I'm gonna go through four things. I'm gonna go through no stabilizing whatsoever using this lens, which is a 24 to 105 that I just mentioned before. So it has a little stabilization switch there, which I now have turned on because I've used it on, but I'm gonna go through absolutely no stabilization. That means no stabilization in the camera, no stabilization on the lens. Then I'm gonna go through just the lens stabilization with a post stabilization, which is in either, you know, whatever kind of software that you use. I personally use Final Cut Pro, but pretty much every software offers some kind of stabilization in the software. And then I'm going to go into uh, just the lens stabilization itself in the gym, then we're gonna get into it seriously. We're gonna get every single stabilization possible, including the lens stabilization, the enhanced image stabilization in the camera, which adds a small crop, and also a post stabilization here on the computer. And I also forgot one more, which is gonna be a wide angle lens with enhanced stabilization. It doesn't have lens stabilization, but it does have enhanced stabilization. And one of the easiest ways to get stable footage is to shoot wide. And then if you can use an enhanced stabilization in the camera, which puts it, I think at around about 22 to 24 mil on that camera lens, which is this one right here, the 16 mil lens. It really does come out like gimbal-like footage, but we're gonna wait and see that. Let's get into it. The first one is really exciting, even though it is no stabilization, because I'm at a football stadium. I get to go through all the coaches' rooms. We get to do a stadium tour, but this is how the footage looks, and it really leaves a whole lot to be decided, I think, because it is too shaky. Right now you saw that footage, it's not too bad. You could add post stabilization in there which would pretty it up a little bit, but really it's still quite shaky and you want something better than that if you're gonna be going and doing the run and gun handheld kind of thing without taking a gimbal. Obviously I could have took a gimbal, but I was running and gunning, I was changing focal lengths, so the handheld option was a better option. However, you don't want that as your end product. The next part, I'm at the same event, except I got to do some footage for uh, somebody else who does a whole bunch of stamping, Olivia and co. Um, so personalized names and all that sort of stuff. This is what this comes out at with just the lens stabilization and also the stabilization in uh, Final Cut Pro after the production. Now that short clip is much, much better. I actually really like that, but you will notice that there's a little bit of wobble in a couple of the clips because I've added the post stabilization using Final Cut Pro. So whilst it's usable, whilst they were really, really happy with that and they thought that it was awesome, as somebody who's been a little bit picky, I thought it could still be improved. 
So then I went to the gym, I added the um, lens stabilization and I took the enhanced stabilization off on the camera. It wasn't on before anyway, but I just wanted to make sure that it was off. So I'm just using the lens stabilization. Also, this format is gonna be really popular if you're going to be doing Instagram reels or TikTok videos or YouTube shorts, you name it. This is the way that I absolutely love to do that. I film everything now in landscape and then I cut it down to portrait. It gives you a much better quality. And also because you're cutting it from landscape into portrait, you get a little bit more stabilization anyway because you're bringing the image in tighter and it's having that less bounce around the lens I guess you would call it but let's check that out I'm not afraid of the devil I've fought demons my whole life I've been knocked down bruised and broken but I never gave up I kept fighting because I know that the greatest victory is not in defeating others but in conquering the darkness within myself so I'll keep on swinging Keep on pushing, and keep on believing that I have the power to beat the devil at his own game. Now that to me is really, really good. I actually thoroughly enjoyed doing that. It's not necessarily a stabilization test because you do want that jolty movement, but you don't want the shakiness. So whilst we had the jolty movement without the shakiness, I was really impressed with the lens stabilization. Absolutely, definitely recommend that to anybody doing it. One thing that I did find when I had the enhanced stabilization and the lens stabilization, which I'll show you now from church, is that it seemed, it seemed to almost fight against each other with the two stabilizations. And I understand why people say with IBIS, even though my camera doesn't have it, I understand why people say with IBIS and the lens stabilization, it kind of fights with each other and you get that wobble effect. Um, this is to me kind of similar. So let's check this out. I, I wasn't a massive fan of having the enhanced image stabilization and the lens stabilization, but let's go. So that's what that was. I mean, still really good, still really usable. Again, being super, super picky, I feel like just some of the images could have been a lot better. Having both stabilizations did kind of fight with each other. So then the question is, well, how do you actually make that better? How do you make it look like it's gimbal-like footage? How do you make it look like when you're walking, you're not bouncing and shaking and you don't have the wobble? How do you get it right? I mean, I think that's what a lot of people ask and what a lot of people want to know. How do you get this right if you don't have a gimbal or maybe you're just getting into it and you can't afford a gimbal because they are expensive? Well, there's some answers to that. See, in that one that I just did, I'm changing the focal length quite a lot. I'm zooming in quite a lot. Every time you zoom in, you're gonna add shake, you're gonna add wobble, you're gonna, it's gonna be harder to stabilize your camera handheld when you're zooming into the subject, which is why a lot of people like and prefer using prime lenses and just zoom in with your feet. Just move the camera closer to the subject and film that way you'll get better stabilization and it will really help. Another way of doing this is to shoot wide. So I've got the 16 millimeter lens again and I took my daughter out. We had a daddy daughter date. It was so, so cool absolutely loved it and then we went down and seen the boats and this is what this came out like say so what are you gonna get a cup of chino a cup of chino there we go i like it what else you got a menu okay what's on the menu waffles, waffles. all right there we go All right, so we've finished our waffles. Sailor's had a baby chino. We are now vlogging, walking with the enhanced stabilization on. This is how it looks. I'm not sure if there's gonna be any Boeing out here or out here yet. I can't see it, but I'll put that in there. Christmas. Um, Christmas? Yeah. Where's Christmas, girl? Where are you? Christmas book is right over there next to the plant. Where are we going? Oh, right over there next to the plant. Well, we better go see that, don't you think? Yes. Okay, let's walk. Watch out for cars. Right, you walk over there, girl. 
Right, so we're going to walk this over. This is walking with the enhanced stabilization on. Let's go, pretty. Show me the Christmas. Wow, there it is. All right, so what we're going to do now, we're going to take Sailor down. We're going to see all the boats. I do apologize if my exposure is in and out being blown out because we've got a whole lot of changing light here outside. And guess who forgot to bring the ND filter? Yep, that would be me. But either way, we're going to walk down. We're going to check out some boats. And then we're going to go take some photos. So that was with the enhanced stabilization, but no lens stabilization because it doesn't have it. And I thought that was absolutely phenomenal. I mean, when we're walking across the road there, it was so stable, there was no wobble. Because I had the enhanced stabilization, it cropped in a little bit. So I got rid of that wobble in the corner. So it actually cut it in using a full frame camera that definitely helps. Then when we were down there on the boats and she's walking along the boats, I even did a test myself where I just walked straight down. It looked like it was on a gimbal. So a quick tip to be able to make sure that your footage is more stable is to shoot wide. Shoot wide and just understand that you're going to have to be a little bit more closer to your subject on a full frame sensor camera. If you've got a crop sensor camera, it probably makes it a little bit easier to be honest with you, but a full frame sensor camera just gives you that field of view, even though you're cropping in with an enhanced stabilization, which I really love. So guys, that's my tips today on how to get more gimbal-like footage handheld, some tips and tricks on how to use it and the functions that you can use. My personal favorite function, if I'm being brutally honest with you, with a zoom lens is going to be to just turn the stabilization to standard stabilization, the digital stabilization, not the enhanced stabilization, and then use a stabilization on the lens. I feel like that's where it just doesn't fight against each other or turn the stabilization off in the camera altogether and just use your lens stabilization if you're using a Canon R8. If you have something that has in-body image stabilization, then sure, use that. I haven't used it, so I can't comment on it, but uh, yeah. That's just my thoughts, guys. Hope you like it. You got any questions, throw them in the comments and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.